This is why the global food crisis is about to go to a whole new level, Michael Snyder reports. Most people that live in the Western world don't realize that global hunger has been absolutely exploding and has now become a major worldwide issue. According to the UN, 2.4 billion people do not have enough food to eat on a consistent basis. Okay, so that's, what, that's uh, almost a quarter or third don't have enough food to eat on a consistent basis and 900 million of them are facing severe food insecurity. Unfortunately, things are about to get a whole lot worse. The deal between Russia and Ukraine that had allowed so much grain to be shipped through the Black Sea has completely broken down and now both sides are threatening to attack any transport ships that come through the area. When the war between Russia and Ukraine began, wheat prices quickly soared to the highest level that we have ever seen. But then a miracle happened. A deal that was agreed to in July 2022 allowed vast amounts of grain to be safely transported through the Black Sea. Since it was implemented, nearly 34 million tons of grain has been shipped out to the rest of the world. But now the deal is over. On July 17, the Russians announced that they were pulling out. And then on Thursday, they warned that any ships sailing to Ukrainian ports will be regarded as potential carriers of military cargo. On Thursday, Moscow's defense minister declared that all vessels sailing in the waters of the Black Sea to Ukrainian ports will be regarded as potential carriers of military cargo, a warning that has sent wheat prices rising. Accordingly, the countries of such vessels will be considered to be involved in the Ukrainian conflict on the side of Kiev, the defense ministry said in a Wednesday statement. It added that several pockets of international water are declared temporarily dangerous for navigation and vessels have been warned that there are no longer safety guarantees. Needless to say, the Russians are not bluffing. They mean it when they say that the shipping of Ukrainian grain is done and they have already conducted military strikes against key port facilities in southern Ukraine. Russian forces have launched extensive missile and drone attacks against port and, of, and port and grain infrastructure in southern Ukraine in recent days. The Institute of the, for the Study of War, a U.S.-based think tank, said Wednesday that it believes the recent attacks were likely to reaffirm Russia's objections to the renewal of the Black Sea grain deal and hinder Kiev's ability to export agricultural commodities. Ukraine's agriculture minister, said Wednesday that recent attacks on Ukraine's southern porter, port of Odessa and other cities had destroyed 600, 000, uh, sorry, 60,000 tons of grain as well as crucial infrastructure. Ukraine is one of the most important bread baskets on the entire planet and normally the Ukrainians export grain to dozens of different nations. On the other side, the Ukrainians have decided to make similar threats and from now on, any ships that are heading for ports controlled by Russia will be fair game. So there you go. Ukraine, however, went on to issue its own measures in response to Moscow's initial escalation. Kiev's defense ministry said that beginning on Friday, any vessels heading to ports in mainland Russia and in Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine, like in Crimea or along the Sea of Azov, may likewise be viewed as transporters of military cargo. Russia normally accounts for more than 20% of all global wheat exports. So this is really bad news. Exports from both Russia and Ukraine will be substantially reduced from this point forward and wheat prices are really soaring. Global inflation is finally coming down, but heightened geopolitical tensions could mean that food is about to get a lot more expensive. Wheat futures soared by nearly 9% on Wednesday and are on track to hit their highest level in three weeks as tensions in Europe rise following Russia's surprise decision to pull out of a crucial deal allowing the export of grain from Ukraine. Corn futures were also nearly 2% higher on Tuesday as traders feared an impending supply crunch of the staple foods. The last time grain prices spiked like this, it was just a temporary phenomenon because the grain deal of July 2022 was the miracle that the world desperately needed, but there is not going to be a miracle this time around. So I would very much encourage you to stock up on storable wheat while prices are still relatively low. Right now, global food production is being hit 
by one disaster after another. In California, some of the most important farmland in the entire state is now underwater because Tulare Lake has filled back up for the first time in 40 years. Tulare Lake, which refilled for the first time in 40 years after atmospheric river storms, pummeled California with snow and rain, is now receding. But it will take at least a year to evaporate entirely, experts say. We are still going to have a Tulare Lake next year, said Jeffrey Mount, a senior fellow at the Water Policy Center of the Public Policy Institution of California. The sudden reappearance of the lake, which was drained for farmland in the late 1800s, has caused hundreds of millions of dollars in agricultural losses and will require substantial cleanup effort once the water has gone, as flooded farm buildings, vehicles, homes, and electric infrastructure still lurk within the waters there. California is the most important agricultural state in the entire country. They grow more of our fruits and nuts than anywhere else by a very wide margin, but now all of the flooding has occurred that has occurred is going to hamper production for quite some time to come. You may have noticed that I write about this new global food crisis quite a bit. Most people don't realize this yet, but this is going to become such a huge story in the years ahead. No matter what decisions our leaders make now, there will be a global famine. There are multiple long-term trends that are going to make it increasingly difficult to produce enough food and meanwhile, global demand for food just continues to increase. Our leaders know this, and they will even talk about these things when they gather for conferences, but they don't want to alarm the general public. We're transitioning from an era of plenty to an era of great suffering, but most people in the general population still have absolutely no idea what is coming. This is by Michael Snyder. He says, my name, about the author, my name is Michael, and my brand new book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I have written six other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short, and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter, and I encourage you to just subscribe so that you don't miss any of the latest updates. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, and the Most Important News. And the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times, and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.